Today we embark on a quest to unravel the fascinating origins of the word bizarre. To understand its roots, we'll explore two distinct etymological paths that invoke flamboyant beards, anger, and exasperation. Join us as we navigate through history, uncovering the intricate connections that transformed a one-time descriptor of facial hair into a symbol of the eccentric and unconventional. The English word bizarre has two distinct etymological paths. One path is rooted in the word bizarra in the Basque language. A second path is rooted in the Italian word bizarro. Which path is correct? We're about to find out. In the Basque language, the word bizarra was used to describe soldiers with flamboyant facial hair, giving the term a unique and distinctive flair. The Basque country is a distinct region in Europe that spans parts of northern Spain and southwestern France along the Bay of Biscay. The Basque people have distinctive cultural traditions, including folk music, dance, and sports like pelota, a traditional Basque ball game. The Basque language, known as Euskara, is a language isolate, which means it has no known linguistic relatives. It is unrelated to Indo-European languages, the language family to which most European languages belong. This linguistic uniqueness has made Basque a subject of great interest among linguists. Bizarra likely stemmed from the medieval Latin word bizo in the 4th century. The exact roots of the medieval Latin word bizo are not well documented. It appears to have emerged in medieval Latin to denote a prominent beard. Given the proximity of the Basque region to France and Spain, noted lexicographer and philosopher Émile Maximilien Paul Littré opined that the word bizarre migrated into French language as the word bizarre and then later into the Spanish language as bizarro. In Spanish, the word bizarro was used to describe a person who was brave or handsome. The French word bizarre underwent a semantic evolution, transforming from its original association with facial hair to describing something strikingly unconventional or outlandish. The Basque origin of the word bizarre has been soundly debunked over the years, and most scholars now believe that the word originated in Italy. In this second etymological path, the word bizarre originates from the word bizarro in 14th century Italy. The word bizarro was used to describe a person who was angry or wild. This etymological origin is supported by Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, a monumental work of Italian literature written in the early 14th century. The Divine Comedy is an epic poem that consists of three parts, Inferno, Hell, Purgatorio, Purgatory, and Paradiso, Paradise. In Inferno, Dante finds himself lost in a dark forest, symbolizing sin and spiritual confusion. The Roman poet Virgil, representing reason and classical knowledge, becomes Dante's guide through hell. In the eighth canto of the Inferno, Dante used the word bizarro to describe a feeling of anger or exasperation. Translated into English, he writes, they all were shouting, at Filippo Argenti, and that exasperates spirit Florentine turned round upon himself with his own words. The word bizarro continued to evolve in Italy during the mid-14th century. Giovanni Boccaccio, an Italian writer, poet, and scholar from the medieval period, wrote the Decameron, following the bubonic plague pandemic in Europe. The Decameron is a medieval Italian masterpiece consisting of a collection of 100 novellas or short stories framed within a narrative structure. Boccaccio used the word bizarro to describe Filippo Argenti, the same political adversary of Dante in the Inferno, as a disdainful, angry, and choleric man. The word bizarro as it is used today, meaning peculiar, strange, or extravagant, evolved later in the Italian language and other Romance languages. By the time the word bizarre was introduced into French in the 17th century and later adopted into English, it had taken on the sense of something strikingly unconventional or outlandish. One notable literary example in the 17th century is contained in the autobiography of Edward Herbert, the first Baron Herbert of Cherbury. Herbert described the attire of a curious woman he had just met as being bizarre like her person. Bizarre continued to gain popularity in the 19th and 20th centuries, coinciding with an era marked by artistic and cultural expression.
From Henry Paget to Josephine Baker and Salvador Dali to Andy Warhol, the word bizarre seeped into everyday language, reflecting societal shifts and cultural movements. This evolution reflects the dynamic nature of language, where words can undergo semantic shifts and take on new meanings over time and across cultures. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Origin of Words. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.